Australian internet. Yeah. Hello, right. what's up? Yes, we are here in Australia. Wi-Fi is a little bit spotty, so bear with us, but we're happy that we're, uh, we're live. Yeah, we're happy that we're <laughs> live. Uh, Australian internet, not great. We are in an Airbnb in Perth. Um, and uh, what's up, Jesus Zamora? What's up? Hello. This is the political vigilante uh, uh, Australian studio. Uh, <laughs> just just uh, somebody's Airbnb. Uh, what's up, everybody? 53 people watching. Hit the like button. Um, you're not wrong. Mike 2005. Um, what? Yes, hello, every man. All right. Right on. Spread the word on your social media. It's like this doesn't keep happening. Yeah, uh -oh. that was an embarrassment. Um, howdy, howdy, and shave your knuckles. Rock. What's up, everybody? What's up? Stop being a pathet pathetic shill. Sam Cedar set you straight. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a joke. I'm going to let that one go through. Um, yeah, 81 people watching, 27 likes. Hit the like button, everybody. Uh, thanks to Rachel Maddow. So uh, if you're so this was the Democratic debate number five. It was November 20th, uh, 2019. We are calling you from the future. Yeah, we're, we're in the future, and uh, the debate, still shitty, even <laughs> in the future. It's an update from well, the future, still a lame debate. The, so debate. the debate didn't get better with age. It's, yeah, it's Thursday morning. Um, actually, now it's Thursday afternoon. It's 1230 uh, in the evening. Um, We're going to the beach after this. We've got to go to the beach. There is. We are right in Scarborough Beach and Brighton Beach. They're both next to each other. They're both beautiful. Brighton's meant more for surfing, so Grand's probably going to be going there. I'll be there as well because it's also better for swimming. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Um, so, first of all, Gino, shave your knuckles for justice. Thank you for supporting the show. It's a great way to support the show is hit the uh, super chat icon. Um, but let's – all right, Ron. Let's, um, you know – let. Let's first of all, um, let's talk about. It. So they just posted the final. Um, so Buttigieg led with twelve point eight minutes. Then Warren with eleven point. Warren, Booker, and Harris all three of them were in second with eleven point five minutes. Then Biden eleven point three. Klobuchar ten point seven. Sanders ten point two. Gabbard nine point two, and then Steyer and Yang. Really, Gabbard had more speaking time than Stayer or Yang. I, I thought, I thought, I thought Stayer. They let him talk a long time. Well, I'm, just because every time he's talking, it's tedious, so it just seems yeah. longer. That's a good point. Um, That's a good point. When they're asking a billionaire how to fix wage inequities and yeah. but the corporations and housing. Out. He's <laughs> going to fix housing. That's just That's unbelievable to me. That's you know, unbelievable to me. Tom Stayer believes that the American people will entertain this fantasy that a billionaire is somehow an outsider who's going to fight corporations. I wonder where he got that idea. Oh, I know. Has anybody pulled that off before? Gee, I wonder. I know. Has anyone pulled that off before and then actually won an election doing that? I, 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 I feel like it's had to have happened. Otherwise, I don't know how he would have gotten that idea. It's so hilarious to me to listen to a goddamn billionaire sit there and say, oh, we got to get the corruption out of this... The reason you're a billionaire is because the system is stacked to allow you to become one. Yeah. Like, you became a billionaire. Tom. And because you're not a very ethical person. Yeah, you're not ethical. Nobody becomes a billionaire ethically. I'm sorry. It doesn't There's no happen. Way. There's no way. And thank you guys for bearing with us. Apparently, our audio is not the greatest in the world. Uh, guys, we're coming at you from Australia. Our Wi-Fi is not the greatest. We don't have any, like, equipment with us. Uh, so we are doing the absolute best we can. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the uh, yeah. It's it's we're literally using my laptop. We don't have any sort of studio facility or anything like that. Um, but we'll we'll uh, we'll do the best we can here. Um, it's it's so so. The first there was Tom Stair saying that crap, which is just fucking hilarious. So I did coal mining actually here in Australia, mainly mm -hmm. Western Australia now, and private prisons. Um, and and then he's been like, I've been fighting for ten years. Well, you know, Tom, you could just give up some of your billions of dollars and put those thousand. He could single-handedly fund a sustainable Green New Deal. 
He could do that. He could just, it would be sustainable. He wouldn't lose money. He wouldn't lose any of his billions. It would be sustainable. So if he genuinely cared about climate change, running for president would be like one of the last things he would ever consider doing. Like he's he's a clown. He he's a complete clown, and I just but he's not the only one. Damn it! There's oh, a bunch of them. So many, um, so many, so many. So let's go through this. Uh, let's go through all of them. Uh, alien effects. Shave your knuckles for justice. Thank you for supporting the show. Okay, first things first. Tulsi's dual destruction of CIA asset Mir Pete and Kapmala go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's. Well, talk I thought the audience was stacked against her. Sure. I mean, that audience. I mean, I'm pretty sure MSNBC handpicked that audience because whenever Pete Buttigieg just parroted stuff he heard on MSNBC, people applauded. Um, and one thing I'll say about Tulsi Gabbard too, I think they were very selective with the questions they of gave. Of course, her. they can't. They wanted to keep her nuzzled, and you know, sadly, I would say they actually kind of got what they wanted. I mean, they they were very selective on the topics they let her speak yeah. about. She did have some moments that she got in anyway, but that's you know, what I mean. They honestly, really nuzzled her. That's what she's had. To, she's had to do that this whole all yeah. the debates. She's yeah. had, to and if they could do it to Bernie more, they would absolutely. They can only get away with it so much for Bernie. but yeah. they, they do it more if they could. That's why Sanders and Gabbard were sixth and seventh place in terms of minutes. Unbelievable. You know, and you know, I'm glad Gabbard went after Mayor Pete. Said, you know, and it just showed you. It showed you what a weasel he is. Yeah. He stands there all ethicals. And then when he's asked a point blank question, you said you're going to send to Mexico. And then he yeah. brings up a sod. He brings up a sod. Oh, and then what he's a like, punk. oh, you, you took it out of context. You really think I'm thinking of invading, blah, blah, blah. You said that. It's like, did you say it or didn't you? And the other thing, too, I, I, I wish Tulsi told, told would start saying this. We'd go, come up with this quote. Part of this is on the Foreign Relations Committee. Like, who needs to go? Pelosi met with a sod. John Kerry met with a sod. You know, this is what world leaders do. I mean, she made a great point of saying, this is how you become a leader. Yeah, and she's like, I guess you don't have the courage to do that. Yeah, and JFK met with Khrushchev. You and your seven languages. Oh, please. yeah. JFK met with Khrushchev. I mean, she named all these people uh, that, that former presidents have met with because that's what you have to do. And so that's a good point. And also, I wish someone would have brought Mayor Pete as his fake black vote thing that came out. You know? Yeah, that was... Well, you know what? I'll say this about Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete, at one point, he said, you know, I want to really share with people what's in my heart. And let me tell you something. I took a deep look the way George W. Bush does into Pete Buttigieg's heart, and all it says is property of the CIA. That's, that's, that's all I heard. his heart said. So I, I don't know. I mean, take with that what you will. But that's what his heart said. I mean, he, he did uh, uh, be totally transparent here and, and give him one compliment, too. I liked what he had to say about farming. And it's mostly a good sort of farming too. They both had good things to say about farming. And they let the people talk about our food culture for like a minute and a half. A and, a half. and then they asked Tom Snyder to come away in and he just, you know, threw in some more bullshit. But but that is one thing that I, I thought he would have said that I actually did agree with. And Tulsi Gabbard made a good point on that as well, although I would, you know, expect to agree with her a, a lot more. So I agree with her too. Yeah, I mean it was it was it was so, so let's go. <laughs> Let's go down the line. I mean, you know, Warren just says what Bernie says, and mm -hmm. she sounds like she and she says it like, "Look, all right, like it was her policy." Yeah. She's repeating Bernie stuff. I even tweeted out. I said, D "Did you just learn Bernie's thing, or or, or back when you were like uh, giving speeches at right wing uh, places when you were a Republican? Was that when?" you heard about these things that Bernie had been saying for 30 years. Yeah, well, you know, she did, um, apparently going to the border really did have an effect on her, which is great, but uh, imagine how she would have felt if she actually went to Dackle. Yeah. Wonder wonder how she would have felt then. Uh, and man, if she was as sympathetic to regular people as she is to billionaires, I mean, she spent how much time being like, don't worry, billionaires, it's not too much, it's just a little bit of a tax. Oh. If she was as empathetic to regular people, she wouldn't be flip-flopping on policies every other day. Well, that thing, like, you get to keep your first $50 billion. She said that with a straight face. Yeah. And then we're going to put a two-cent tax? Just two cents. Two Come cents on, on $50 billion? Uh, what, are you talking talking stuff? what are you talking about? Like, it was just like, it was insane. I like when Bernie was like, what if we actually did tax you guys that much? You'd still be billionaires and we could fund everything in this country. Yes. So maybe I will go that far. Just go ahead and put it. Yeah. And it's like she's I, I, Liz Warren is the, like one of the her and Steyer are so uninspirational and Klobuchar when she speaks 
And most of this, most of this feel. Klobuchar was somewhat entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Me. She was like, I got some black exes. And I don't want I don't want rich people to go to college for free. Because some of my black exes might go to college for free. Fuck them. That was her whole thing. Yeah, I mean she, she always, talked about her exes. She talked about her exes. And I think it was uh, someone who watches this cat B put this on, on Twitter. She said uh, someone can give Klobuchar some wine, a glass of wine. I can't handle watching her shake anymore. <laughs> she always sounds like she's about to cry. She does. She sounds like she's she about does. to cry. Like, and Pete Buttigieg always sounds like he's giving instructions on how to open a checking account. So that's, <laughs> that's how it holds out. <laughs> and Joe Biden just sounds like he's lost. Joe Biden sounds like he's asking directions to a grocery store, and he has a Garmin in his hand where you're like, I didn't know they still need <laughs> What Joe Biden sounds like every time he speaks. So I was like, "Look, I did this. I did Brock. Remember, oh. Brock liked me. Brock. I mean, he's just like we had a spotless record. You and Obama did a spotless record. Uh, you dropped more bombs than Bush. You jailed more whistleblowers than Bush. You opened up the Arctic to drilling twice. You made the tax permanent. So yeah. you had a really spotless record of being a pro-choice Republicans. Yeah. Can we just state the obvious right here? I don't give a shit, and I don't think Graham does either. I mean, I'll speak for both of us here, so I'm pretty sure you're in agreement here. We don't give a shit about Obama's ego. Yeah. We don't give a shit about Obama's legacy. I personally gave that guy the benefit of the doubt for way too freaking long. He's not the man I thought I was voting for. He's not yeah. the man any of us thought we were voting for. So I don't give two shits about his legacy or how he's worried we're going to our left. He has made millions since leaving office, and the only time he rears his head is to wag his finger at voters, to wag his finger at progressives, and endorse people like Dianne Feinstein. So I don't give two shits what he has to say about anything. Yeah, he's a corporate guy that, that took us from two wars to seven. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I'm just so tired of that. Well, they asked it in the debate questions. They asked debate questions about Obama. They had two questions about Hillary Clinton. I mean, the first question, that first question, like, hey, you said something mean about the queen. Are you going to bend the knee? Yeah. It was really so stupid. That was even a question. It's just like, it's just so dumb. And they, you know, we spent 10 minutes on climate change, which is 10 minutes more than the last debate. And then right off to Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia. That's right where they went next. And then, and then like Klobuchar, the, the shit they would hit, they would, it was unbelievable to watch them. And towards the end, Klobuchar's like, she literally, was talking about the McCarthy hearings. Yeah. You're a fucking Russian hater. Yeah. You're screaming, this is McCarthy 2.0. Yeah. And you're talking about, the, like, they have no concept of how ridiculous, excuse me, they sound. Like, oh, so it's textbook or man, worst piece, you know? Like, like they're, they're, the thing they're speaking against is what they're actually doing. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's like, it's like an addict, like an active alcoholic or something like that. They usually accuse you of the thing that they do. <laughs> Because you remind me of one of my exes. You remind me of one of my exes that you're going to go to college. Uh, and uh, who was it? I think it was. Um... Oh, and Klobuchar, she brought up Virginia and how well Virginia is doing. She's like, yeah, people are getting up. Yeah, Amy Klobuchar, people in Virginia are getting up. You know why? Because of people like Lee Carter, not because of blank suit corporatists like you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, North American 8, Shaver Knuckles for Justice. Yeah, I could not sit through that debate. I turned it off after the first break. I don't blame you. It's so, it's so maddening to watch. I mean, there's, there's about 10 percent, 50 percent of the time, some of the candidates make decent points where you go, "This is what a a serious uh, debate. This is what a debate on the issues and how we're going to solve these problems should be. This is what a debate is." And there was a handful of times when those happened. The rest of the time, it was just like. Kamala Harris saying, I'm for the people. You mean when you put 120,000 people of color in bars? Yeah, her closing statement oh, needed a laugh track. Fuck. <laughs> He's just like, I've never been beholden to a corporation. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And then and then she tried to get tough with Tulsi, like this is her payback moment from mm -hmm. two debates ago. And Tulsi just said, well, I'm a vet. I served. And you just saw Kamala's body language. They had to cut away from her because she was like, oh, God. I'm not a vet. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, when, she, when she started going after Budigig, he just kind of like put his head down. But, yeah. but then it's like he had his rebuttals ready. He had his SNBC parroting nonsense ready. Yeah. And she got, you know, some of it. It's obvious where that audience was stacked. I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders did, some Sanders supporters got in 
that big. So, you know, some prayers to the MSNBC employee who's going to be fired tomorrow. <laughs> but, you know, some, 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 some different people got into it. So too. Sandra brought up she, Bernie on, on Saudi Arabia and Palestine. That was fantastic. When they brought up Saudi Arabia, this is the, this is the thing that I, 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 it's so hard to watch is MSNBC talks about. And then Joe Biden. We'll get to what Bernie said in a second, but mm -hmm. I just gotta we gotta wade through all this hypocritical bullshit before we get to actual some substantive talk that Bernie had. So first of all, they talk about how bad Saudi Arabia is, right? With with Khashoggi, which is awful. Um, no mention of Julian Assange, no mention of, of of Chelsea Manning. No one on that stage can bring that up. Nobody can bring that up. It's fucking sinning. Like. They, they, you, you, I'm so sick of the selective outrage of this bullshit country. Oh yeah, and the Democratic so Party. I'm so fucking sick of it. The Republicans have their own version of selective outrage, like when they say states' rights, states' rights, detect abortion. Then the federal yeah. the government needs to come in. So they're fucking full of shit assholes too. But like, and then Joe Biden goes up there. We're going to get tough with Saudi Arabia. And I tweeted, "You mean like when you and Obama sold 113 billion dollars in weapons?" Which was 13 billion more than the 100 billion that Trump sold them? Is that what you're talking about? Like you, you, you are unbelievable to listen to the bullshit. So then, when Bernie comes in there and says that stuff, and he goes, "Look, I'm a Jewish guy. I'm pro-Israel, but I'm, it's not right what we're doing to the Palestinians in Gaza." Mm -hmm. That was bold because we need to just reevaluate who some of our allies are. That was like yeah. awesome. Like fuck you, APAC. You know, it was, it was really it was, it was like a Jewish man talking about this. Like, this is what needs to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, well, Bernie, one thing Bernie did throughout that entire debate is he just, whenever he had a moment, he sort of kind of listened to the question, but just talked about what he wanted to talk about, which was the right thing to do. The, this debate would have been way better off without moderators. And if there was any doubt in your mind, Joe Biden is so pathetic. Cory Booker and Kamala Harris can dunk on. Yeah, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris can dunk on Joe Biden. That is how pathetic. He, I mean, he was just saying stuff, and they were both like, "No, no." He was just no. like, "Black people love me," and they were like, no, "No, no, no, that's not, no, not true." I mean, he would lose so bad to Trump. Trump would eat him alive. Trump would eat Biden alive. He would eat Warren alive. Be more closer. Yeah, I think Warren would get closer. I, I don't think Warren would win. I, I I think she would lose, but she would at least get closer. Yeah, he'd lose by worse than Hillary. Oh God! I think Warren would lose by a little less than Hillary. But yeah, he would lose worse than Hillary. Three hundred seventy one people watching. One hundred fifty eight likes. Hit the like button, everybody. Um, and if you're in Perth, we'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, November twenty second, in Perth, Australia. Go to Raplicone.com or GrahamElwood.com. Um, and uh, come out to the show. Extropian, shave them. Kamala, the prosecutor for the state, not the people. Oh, yeah. God, she, yep. I mean, she, she's the audacity. I was a prosecutor for the people. Yeah. She has that video, which I've played numerous times, and I will play again of her going, mocking people going, uh, more schools, less prisons. Yeah. She's she's so offensive. Wasn't it just that phrase in oxymoron? I'm prosecutor for the people. Prosecutor like, for the people. It's just like like unless you're prosecuting banks or you're prosecuting <laughs> you didn't do. That's just like prosecutor for the oh. people. It's like like I'm I'm a parking attendant for the people. Oh god, I'm yeah, yeah. Those, I write those tickets and, and they're for you. For you. Hey, that's what they're for. Hey, Purdue Pharmaceuticals is the drug dealers for the people. That's right. That's what they, they got. Are. They're really in the people business. They're really in the people business. Private prison industry as well. Um, George Allen, thank you. Hope you're having a good time over there. We'll We're having a great time. time. we got to talk about that real quick. We'll get back to the debates. But I'll tell you, you've been so good to us. It has been so awesome, man. Yeah. We've done three amazing shows already. We've done Melbourne, Adelaide, and Sydney. And everybody that came out was great. The, the People for Assange, which is this black one, came out to several of the shows. We met some of the MMT crew, and we yes. met uh, Professor Stephen Hale. Yeah, instructor. You can't. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Yeah, instructor Stephen Hale. And it's been fantastic. I wish I was uploading more videos from interviews and stuff. The internet. <laughs> It's so frustrating. The internet's a little frustrating. It's, with where hard, we're at. it's hard to get videos up. So no, apparently, there's community broadband in parts of Australia. Oh, okay. Apparently, there's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look more into that. But apparently, there's. I mean, we're staying in Airbnbs. We're traveling. 
Um, you know, so we haven't been uh, privy to any of that stuff. We're just working with what we got. Yeah, but this was fantastic. The, um, the, the, the crowds have been awesome and now we're in Perth and it's beautiful and we have more show tomorrow and then we fly home and it's just been, uh, thank you to all the Aussie fans that have come out. We've just been, the, the whole, we've had such a great time. The shows have all been great. The venues have been great. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. And here we are literally on the end of the earth, like the edge of the earth. Is the great. edge of the earth. We saw the sunset last night. It yeah, was pretty amazing. It was just so like we were talking about yesterday. We were strolling around this cool little beach town of how lucky we are that we get to do this and how cool it is that this both of our little YouTube shows and Jimmy show has gotten us fans literally all over the web. I can't. It, it's the coolest thing. We're having a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing some of you in Perth. We'll see some yeah. of you on Friday. We're not, not done yet. So thank you. Um, Brian McManus, Shave Your Knuckles for Justice. Great to see you guys. You really should come to Twitch. It's owning YouTube in terms of community interaction. They just opened up a politics category. Okay. I'm a, I am on Twitch with Get Your News On With Ron. Get Your News On With Ron does stream on Twitch. It's one of the places that I do stream on. And uh, we're also very active on Rockfin. Uh, I'm going to look into starting to stream on Rockfin. I think we should both do that. Um, because, yeah, I mean, YouTube's new terms of service is uh, very concerning and, you know, it's important to kind of be on, on different platforms. So. I'll, I want to do that. I've heard this about to switch before. I'll, I'll talk to Ron more. I don't know much about Twitch, but um, I'll, I'll try to use that, Brian. And anything I can do to improve the interaction and make money, get away from YouTube fucking screwing us all over. It's just insane. Um, a little bit for a hall monitor. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, George Allen, Shaving Knuckles for Justice. Great to read your guys' comments tonight. Yeah, it was fun live tweeting it. That's it's, always my favorite part. I would be so freaking oh, bored watching these things. I couldn't watch live it. tweet it. I couldn't either. Like, if, if I'm not live tweeting it, I'll, I'll, I'll just if we were live tweeting, catch the highlights later. If we were live tweeting or doing this, I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch it. The live yeah, tweeting and watching other people's jokes. Crystal Ball had some great jokes tonight. Oh yeah. Oh, oh man, Crystal Ball that. was hilarious. And um, and uh, I forget another. Uh, uh, anyway, another progressive funny person, Sean Comitz. Your knuckles, you're making Gotham great again. Sometimes it feels like Tinder in a small town. All photos, no info. <laughs> I get it. I like it. Um. Uh, the worst debate ever. How are you, Graham and Ron? We are wonderful. Tony we DeMeo, saying, thank yeah, you. Yeah, what's up, Tony? Um, you know, I feel like they're all just tied for last because every time I watch a debate, I'm like, this has somehow been the worst one. But I always feel that way. So yeah. I'm like, well, I think they're all just equally shitty. Um, this one was in particular bad because I, I think the moderators were maybe the worst. Yet. I mean, Rachel Maddow and co, they were absolutely terrible. Um, their questions were so deliberately picked and who they nuzzled. I mean, Andrew Yang could have just made a beer run at one point. I mean, they, they weren't letting him talk at all. He did use the words domestic terrorism and his mic wasn't cut immediately. So thoughts and prayers to that MSNBC employee who got fired. But, you know, I mean. That was a good moment real quick when they that talked was a great about moment. the white nationalists. Because I'd make them, I'd make them domestic terrorists. I wish someone on that stage would have gone one of the ways to stop racism is to end this uh, toxic capitalism. Yeah. That's what's creating all of these divides. Mm -hmm. You start giving people jobs under a Green New Deal where everybody gets to go to work. I bet you the racial divides would start to, to minimize, like what Fred Hampton did as leader of the Black Panther Party in Chicago in 1968 when he went to poor working class Southern whites who were in this neighborhood of Chicago called Hillbilly Harlem. Many were the racist, Confederate flags, in the Klan, all that stuff. And he sat down with them and he gave speeches about how capitalism is keeping yeah. us divided. Yeah. Nobody talked about that. Not MLK started, you know, talking, oh. speaking that. Yep. Too. And none of those speeches are getting the rounds. None of those speeches make the rounds. And, you know, we know what happened to both of those. Right. Speeches. Yep. And same with uh, Bobby Kennedy. Mm -hmm. um, Harv the Beard, hashtag angry male. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for supporting the show. Uh, all right, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody here. Um, boom, boom, boom. We are having a great time. Let me scroll through these. 
It's really bad. Uh, all right, here. Oh, jump. Do you just miss one? Yeah. Here, wait, we got a couple here. Yeah, yeah there's a couple there's down a bunch here. here. Yeah. Let's go. Um, there. Sets, sets, whatever. Thank you so much for supporting the show. I uh, struggled my way to watching it, but I felt that MSNBC really did an effective job of leading the debate along the Dem Party's narrative. It was far from a debate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just, yeah, I mean, all those questions were narrow. I mean, I mean, the one question about war for Bernie, it was so unbelievably leading. Like, they were just like, Bernie, would you end all the wars if it meant you had to sacrifice every American's firstborn and eat a kitten on television? Like, it was such a bullshit leading question. That, that, that Afghanistan question. like, would question. you end the Afghanistan question? Where it's like, you've got to be. And, and Bernie deflected it well. He, he handled it well. But it's just so ridiculous. Like, like they're fishing for something. They have the candidates they prioritize, and they prioritize uh, Buttigieg, Warren, Booker, Klobuchar, and, uh, and Harris. And you know, I, you know, everybody knows he's flailing, but you know, they're incredibly anti Bernie. They want to make sure they nuzzle people like Tulsi Gabbard, people like an Andrew Yang. Um, and that, I think they, that was their agenda. And unfortunately, they were successful at it. I mean, it's, yeah, because MSNBC needs their, I mean, look, they have intelligence people working for them. The, the, the big Raytheon and Boeing buy a lot of ad time with them. Yeah. So they need the war machine to go. So that they just need to keep that going. So that's of course they're going to ask Bernie some leading question. They just said this country is so right wing. Yeah, it's, oh, it's 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 unbelievable. Like it's really like our Overton window is, is just. I mean, Joe Biden said at one point on the debate stage, he was like, you know, it's my people on my left and people on my right. And it's like, Joe, there's nobody to your right even on this stage. You're to the right of some Republicans. You're if we were in England, you'd be to the right of their right wing party. <laughs> And here in Australia, where we're at, Joe Biden is to the right of their right wing party. Yes, it's unreal. 345 watching, 254 likes at the like button. Tony DeMeo, I despise Booker, but I'm so happy you mentioned the drug war, which should end. No, he had, look, he had a good moment he there. He had a couple good mo moments in talking about that. Is, I mean, some of these candidates, we've, we've talked about this every day. They'll, they'll we'll bring up. Um, they'll have some good, like even yeah. on like the Roe v. Wade thing, everybody had. A good answer there. At least everyone that I that I recall, like everybody had a good answer there on how they right. would preserve Roe v. Wade, how they would preserve abortion rights. Yeah, those are all good answers. Like, I, I think we're all kind of in unison on that one. And hopefully, uh, you know, if, if one of those people on stage was president, they would practice what they preach. But you know, overall, you, you gotta look at what candidates are actually for. And it's yeah. Um, what else we got here? Trump didn't have a heart attack. That was fate. Uh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Check out and sign up for Rockfin. Yeah, we're both on Rockfin. Uh, our sound is choppy. I wish there was something we could do to fix that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> wouldn't doubt it. The videos are doing shitty internet. Yeah, it's just from what we're told, internet in Australia is not that great. Um, so I wish we... Because they, they kind of did it similar to what we did in the United States. They kind of have a lot of organized to offer which is what we have in the U.S. Yep. When it comes in or out. So. Rupert Murdoch. Greta, it's about to snow. Quit promoting snowman blindness. What a snooze. <laughs> Thank you, Amars. Greta. But Greta. It's snowing. You can go play in the snow and forget about climate change, Greta. Embrace the snow. Forest fires are warm and lost to go blind, Greta, with your youthful anger. Oh, hey, Maris, thank you so much. Um, yes, you're happy you, as Alexander for sparing yourself the abuse of the debates. Um, unite behind the top running progressive, Bernie Tulsi 2020, right on. Uh, hello from Castlemaine, hello. Biden on violence against women, we keep punching at it and punching at it. Yeah, oh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was insane. He was asked about race relations, by the way. Started out race relations, and he was just like, you know, guys on campuses shouldn't beat women. That, that's bad. We got to keep punching at it. It's like. He didn't realize. What? Like, what do you, where? People in the audience laugh. Do you know where you are? Yeah. Seriously, Joe. What year is it? I don't know about President My 14. It's just like, you literally like, that's how we're going to beat defend domestic violence. Is punch at it? Yeah. It's like the heroin epidemic. We just got to keep shooting it yeah. and raise a vein and just inject it and inject it. And 
We're going to smoke the crack problem away, Ron. We got an epidemic where people keep hanging themselves, and we just need to hang in there. You know, we just need to, like, what the fuck, Joe? We need to get enough strong rope to end the hanging problem. <laughs> God, he's out of his fucking mind. He's out of his mind. And today's his birthday. Oh, God. Wow. Today's his birthday. Oh, God. That's why, that's why they did the Patriot Act thing for him. I didn't say it's, ah, it's his birthday. Ah, the Patriot Trying to give him a birthday. Um... Shave knuckles, punch at it, punch at it. That's all. <laughs> Danny Bella Perez, thank you so much. Shave your knuckles for justice. Um, Jilly Love Bernie's the only one calling for an uprising and a revolution. Yeah. Well, you see how they try to make him into that. They're like, you're calling for a revolution. Like yeah. they're trying to get him to save so they can go Bernie's a nutbag. They wanted to compare his people to Trump supporters because they said, like, people were chanting lock her up. Yes. Now people are chanting about Trump. And it's like, first of all, like, everybody's chanting about Trump. That's not unique to Bernie supporters. That's like everybody who- It wasn't all Bernie Trump. supporters at a baseball game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. And if anything, Bernie supporters are the ones who are like, let's just focus on beating him at the ballot box. Yeah. If anything, it's, it's the, the Bernie supporters that are more focused on issues than focused on like, oh, if we just impeach Trump, all of our problems go away because they know that's not the case. Right, because then Mike Pence- The status quo got us Trump. And, and one of the MSNBC reporters said this, we were watching the pregame or listening to it before we started watching as we had to watch it on the so internet. We know how to party. We know how to we gotta, party. We gotta watch that free game. There was a guy on MSNBC, and we, we just heard it. So we couldn't see it. And he goes, ah, oh, impeachment's useless because it, it'll pass in the Congress, but it won't pass in the Senate, so there's no point doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They cannot get it through the Senate. It won't happen. So you're going to give Trump ammunition to go, they tried to beat me and I won again. Mueller report yeah. was fake. Like, that's what he'll do. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they think like it'll hurt him, but it's like, no, oh, it's, it's not the 70s. They, the, the Democrats keep thinking they run into this playbook from like 1993. Yeah. Where they're like, we got a bad soundbite on him. He has 10 bad soundbites a day. And that's the other thing when they're like, he's in the news, he's everywhere. The media is asking this. This panel of millionaires Working for a, a billionaire corporation yeah. is saying, boy, Trump's everywhere in the news. You assholes put him there every yeah. day. You corporate media fucksticks put him every – he's the reason we have him by – not the, not the whole reason, but a lot of the right, reason. A lot of reason. Oh, absolutely. Wes Moonves said it. He's yeah. good for ratings. He said it. He's a, he's a victor to his Frankenstein. They created him. Dude, he's a, just a reality TV show. He, yeah. You know, if Real Housewives – they keep making that in different cities because it gets good ratings. Mm -hmm. It's a train wreck to watch. It's a fucking train wreck to watch that show. That's what Trump, Trump is. And they interview his most psychotic supporters, and they talk. He said this every day. Can you believe this? And every day is a bombshell. There's another Nobody bomb. tweeted. There's been three, four years of bombshells dropping. Like, it's unbelievable, man. Um, Adam Niswanger, thank you so much. You're making Gotham great again. Keep making truthful and genuine content. You got that right, Adam. That's what we're doing. Um, we fly back. We get back Sunday. So next week, you know, barring jet lag, I'll be back in my uh, studio banging out as many videos as I can. Like I said earlier, the internet here is tough. Upload times. I mean, like a four-minute video took me an hour and a half. And I just like, there's no time. So I'm trying. But I'll get more content out next week. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Daryl Presley, shaving those for Make Gotham great again. Boom. Thanks, Daryl. Really appreciate you. Such great ways to support the show. What you guys do is great. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash grand you get bonus content every month. You can get that as a list of five bucks. Like Ron said, we're both on Rockfin. So, like, someone came up to a show in, um, in Melbourne and they're like, hey, my Patreon, I'm spread out. My money's tight. I'm supporting all these Patreon people and it's, it's getting a little tight. I'm not sure what to do. And I said, we well, don't even go to Rockfin because for 10 bucks, you get all of our content, mm -hmm. all of our premium content and our regular content. And if you endorse our videos, we get, anyway, a lot of cool ways to support the show. Um, got a lot of tour dates. So December 13th, we're at Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. That's right. December 14th, we are in Hollywood. That's right. And then starting really, we're trying to add a local Southern California date for January if we can find one. Uh, if anyone's got any good venues anywhere in, in California, let us know. And then February, we start the big 20 tour. Tucson, Arizona, San Francisco, California, Florida in March, uh, where we are, we are already confirmed in Miami and Orlando. We should have tickets for Tampa available very soon. Yeah. April, Portland, Seattle. Uh, in May, 
we will be in Cleveland and we're working on Detroit and Cincinnati and Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're stacking them up, guys, every at least one weekend a month in 2020, if not two. So come see us on the road. Speaking of see us on the road, we saw Sam Dean in Melbourne. What's up, dude? Thanks for coming out to the show. It's so cool when uh, you folks that come to the Super Chat then come to the live shows and we get to meet you in person. It, 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 it's just a really cool thing to put a face to the screen name. Uh, Sam Dean, I got banned from Twitter for making fun of you too. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. They call it hateful speech. Hope that makes you smile, guys. Great time yelling at you. <laughs> Sam, it was great meeting you, dude. Uh, and uh, joking around with you after the show in Melbourne. I'm sorry you got banned on Twitter. That sucks. Um, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, Patrick, please come to Virginia. Would love to see you live. Well, we're definitely hitting the East Coast again. And we're going to be hitting the Southeast some too. So... I don't know if we'll be doing anything in Virginia, in Virginia, but we will definitely be in there. We'll be hitting D.C. again. Yeah. We'll be hitting North Carolina. Um, so, yeah. And uh, if you have a specific city, and this goes for everybody, email us. Let us know. We'll see what we can do. If you have a specific city, even if you, like, know of a good venue that's, like, 100 seats or something like that, that, that that's helped. We've had some fans help find us some venues. Uh, but we'll definitely be in D.C. and Philly and Boston and New York. Um Again, because those the yeah, three we'll be there. We'll be there later in 2020, close to the election. Yeah, we'll be there for sure. Um, Graham, this is a smoking gun. Epstein is free, and they killed Tony Rada. Oh wow! And the only way we will see real change is to destroy capitalism. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know that I disagree with you on that one, Alex. <laughs> so look forward to seeing you both in Perth. Awesome. See yes, you tomorrow. Tomorrow, RBU. See you tomorrow. Comedy at the crack. Perth. Yeah. Still tickets available. Still tickets Rompico. available. Com, Grandma.com. Grab those tickets. We will see you tomorrow night, Perth. And we are stoked. Yeah. Um, MMT indeed. Uh, I put an interview up with Stephen Hale, a brief one, which is cool. And I have an MMT playlist if you want to learn more about it. Um, I have probably seven or eight videos on my MMT playlist, including a long form interview with Stephen Hale, an interview with Fidel Kaboob, a bunch of interviews with Jeff Epstein. Uh, not that. Jeff not that Epstein. one. A different. A different. Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. He contributes to my Patreon, so he's in my credits. And yeah. Every once in a while, in the comment section, I'll still see somebody going, "Graham, Jeff Epstein." Like. Well, he does. He does the harmony on the "Get Your News On Front" theme song. People are like, "Jeff, he sings harmony." Like that's different. Jeff Epstein. Yeah. Different it's, guy. It's, it's, it's a common name. It's a very common name. Um. Uh. Rubu83145, Shagger for Justice. Uh, what did you make of the Prince Andrew interview? It, I didn't see it. I've watched half of it. I've watched clips of it. And I've watched probably yeah, about half, if not two thirds of it. And I couldn't watch because I would either start laughing because he's so ridiculous. First of all, it's very clear what this interview was about. It was the royal family going, hey, you put yourself between us and that guy. So. And then what he did was, first he was like, well, the royal family never invited him. He was, I invited him, but really, I just knew him through Jelene Maxwell. He said, like, he literally said, and, and this reporter had a research, like, but you, but Jelene Maxwell and Epstein were at your place on the stage of this party. He said, but he was just kind of a plus one. Hmm. It's like he's blatantly lying and he's so arrogant. And, li and literally, Ron, I'm going to put him on when I get home because the interview is just maddening. She's like, after he was convicted in Florida, you then stayed at his place in Manhattan. And he's like, yeah, I, 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 I had to end the friend of a friend, you know. Just well, no, it's worse than really? that. Really? He said, I had to end the friendship and I didn't want to do it over the phone. I guess I'm guilty of being too honorable. So I went okay. to his place to do it in person. She's like, yeah, but you stayed there for several weeks. He's like, well, I had, that's where I was staying. It was a long time. Yeah. It was a long friendship ending. And he says, that's where I was staying. Oh, yeah, because the prince, there's no way he could find anywhere else to stay in Manhattan. It's, it's not getting cheaper. I mean, it's not like he could just rent out the top floor of a hotel. <laughs> yeah, I got to check out this. It's interview. insane, Ron. Right? It's, 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 it's so arrogant. It's so crazy. It just shows you the arrogance of the royals thinking they can do whatever they want. Um yeah, it's 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 it was like it's it's mad. I want I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it and and do a whole thing. 
you know, so. Balthazar 228, ropes pair didn't guillotine himself. I will never get tired of an Epstein didn't kill himself joke on the internet. That is I funny. Mean, I Good will job, never, I will never. Uh, Julie wants to know how I liked the Vegemite. I liked it. Um, I had it on toast with a lot of butter, which is what you're supposed to do. It's a little bit uh, with a lot of butter. I had it later on a sandwich in the airport. I did not care for it in that context. So uh, my <laughs> takeaway from Vegemite, if you're gonna have Vegemite, you're supposed to have it with toast that has a lot of butter or something similar and like a very thin film of the Vegemite. And then it's good, it just tastes like kind of seasoned toast, it's tasty. But uh, a lot of it on a sandwich, I, I couldn't get into that. What's up, Annabelle? Great to see you in Melbourne. Harris is a younger version of Pelosi, smug, arrogant, and not prepared to listen unless there's an idea, uh, unless it's her idea. Yeah, schoolyard pot. Yeah, no, that's a fair. That's a fair thing, man. I, I just, um, um, I pointed at you saying you asshole. <laughs> that was a point. I don't know what I was talking about. I was just pointing at the camera, the, the media. Um, Gropy McSniffy. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's Joe Joe Biden. Yeah, Tony DeMeo. All I asked Gropey McSniffy about sexual assault. And then we're going to punch our way through domestic violence, right? Yeah. Ugh. We're going to bomb our way to peace. Yeah. He's... God. It's unbelievable. He's <laughs> like a diaper change because he shit himself. I, I like it. his closing statement. He's like, oh, there's nothing that we wanted to do that we couldn't accomplish. This is the guy whose platform, by the way, uh, includes us not being able to have a Green New Deal, us not being able to have free college, us not being able to have loving wages, us not being able to end the wars, us not being able to have health care. Yeah. That's what Joe Biden stands for. But he'll tell us how we've been able to do everything we've put our mind to. Yeah. Oh, and nobody clapped for him. No one nobody, clapped for him. He was just like, let's get up, America. And everybody was just like, uh, is he done? Is he is done? done? Uh, I, I don't. Like, it's okay. unbelievable. Yeah, and then one of the breaks, they, MSNBC shows up. He's leading the pack of people over 65 years of old age. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he's like, Bernie's leading young people. Yeah. Like crushing. Too I, love, I love the corporate media. They'll say, uh, Bernie's too old. Then they'll say, Bernie doesn't have new old people. Then they'll say, young people are finding out about the candidates we try to uh, blacklist. How is that happening? And then they'll say, Twitter memes are rotting your brain. Watch cable news instead. <laughs> Fantastic. Balthazar two two eight, what's up? I would love to see Mike Preisner rip into bourgeois uh, oh yeah, on his military steps on stage. A fully any war voice would crush him. Oh yeah, about booty judge. Yeah, it's it. Mm. I mean, I'd love to see Preisner just talk. You know, um, it, it would be fantastic, man. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, booty judge. You know. He makes the point about, you know, I'm wearing a wedding ring and I've been ostracized and I wasn't allowed to, you know, get married two elections ago. That's valid. That's a valid thing to bring up. Uh, that's one of the things Obama did right, actually. But, yeah, I'd like yeah, to see the people demand. It. Yeah. 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 They leaned on him so hard mm -hmm. that he had to make it happen. Um, so let's read a couple more super chatters here. Uh, Balthazar 228, boom. Somehow everybody forgets that instead of unnecessarily sending troops into war a, or necessarily sending troops into war, we could use diplomacy. Yeah, I know. It's This is how much of a, just a right-wing war country we are. Tulsi Gabbard is just smeared yeah. because she met with somebody because she doesn't want to send more people into war. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things. When, when, you, when you try to spread peace, you're controversial. When you drop bombs, you're presidential. That's the country we live in. Yep, we are a right wing imperialist country. It's crazy. Uh, Biden has cognitive decline. We all need to do phone banking for Bernie. BernieSanders.com slash call. Uh, automaton111. Thank you. That's a great good, good move. Everybody do that. BernieSanders.com slash call. Um, all right. What else do we got here? Probably McSniffy. We did that one. Uh, first class, thank you for supporting the show. Um, Dan, oh God, Dan, well, Danny's on the press. 
trial tying up Bernie. What do they mean by that? Um, I think I, I understand this correct, Danny. Um, thanks for supporting the show. Is they just the impeachment trial trying up Bernie because Bernie is on he's in the Senate, so he has to be at this dumb trial. Oh, oh so okay, okay. All right, I wasn't I wasn't sure what they meant by that. So yeah. another reason for it. Yeah. It's like anything they can do, man. This impeachment trial, great distraction. Oh, big time. Big we're, time. We're That's not, all it has been. Is are, nothing nowhere in the American media are we talking about what's happening here in Australia? The fires. Yeah. The worst they've ever had it. Yeah. And we were at the beach on Tuesday in Sydney. It's a beautiful beach day, but there was a haze and you could smell smoke. You could smell smoke, yeah. Which, by the way, we smell smoke in California, too. So climate change is affecting the entire world, obviously. And uh, they spent about two minutes talking about it. Maybe ten. It was ten. Was it ten? Total, maybe. That's with everybody's... Yeah, I, I, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm intelligent. No, you might be right. I mean, maybe it just went faster because I was like, oh shit, they're actually talking about yeah. something. This is refreshing. So maybe it went fast. And then it was gone. Yeah. And that was, that was, I mean, like, it, it's, so we're going to waste all this time with this impeachment. We're going to tie it up because he has to be on the, the panel. To, 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 you know what I mean? It's just like, but I'm glad Bernie said, look, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Like, I'm going to do all these things that need to happen. I at least appreciate Steyer for saying how important climate change is and it should be the number one issue. And I'm, Yeah, I appreciate him saying that too. Yeah. I, I can't take him seriously. No, because he mean, made money he's, from coal. He's made money from coal. And he, again, if he actually gave a hoot about climate change, he could fund a Green New Deal tomorrow. He could start his own, like, whatever yeah. entity and make all these green efforts. He, he could do all of that tomorrow. Why yeah. is he running for president? Yep. It makes zero sense. Uh, American Comedy Club in San Diego. Yeah, I kind of know. Well, we're going to try to get a show there, but they're they're booked a lot. It's hard to kind of get a spot. There. Somebody said a venue in Albuquerque. Can you repeat that venue to to us, please? Because yes. I we have been having a hard time finding a venue in Albuquerque. We plan on coming in May, um, but we we need some help with the venue. Yep. So if you know of any small theaters, if you know of any rock clubs, uh, I, I'm pretty sure there's not a full time comedy club in Albuquerque. Yeah. So Albuquerque menus, please let us know because we do plan to come in May, but we've been having a hard time. Albuquerque and Detroit, those are the two, the first part of 2020 that we're trying to lock in that, that we're still, uh, we still need a little work on. Albuquerque and Detroit, if you have any for either of those two towns. And then we're going to be booking more of 2020 uh, as time goes on. At the Batman fan, you should show my cave. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the DNC won the debate. <laughs> Mm. This is valid. Um, all right. What else did we miss? Anybody else's super? Del Rey Theater, Theater, somebody said. Um, the Del Rey Theater in Albuquerque? Is that, is that what they said? I think that's I mean, an album. If I'm thinking of that, that's a, a really big place. That's a huge <laughs> fucking thing. I think about 100 seats or less is kind of what we you should do. Can't for. do 1,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Between there, 60 yeah. and 100. Yeah. Um, Matthew Nelson, boom. Get Chelsea Budin on a stream. Okay, not familiar with that. <laughs> I'm reach out to me. Yeah. Tony DeMeo, they actually asked if more people should join the military, right? That's insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was insane. That was insane. Never, everybody pretty much said yes. No, to absolutely. To, to service. Um, Promise when you cover those EV vehicles, uh, kill IA farming jobs ads I sent to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so this is Amy Maris. Thank you so much. Uh, she's uh, uh, Amy Maris sent me some some videos, some actual ads in Iowa of like how electric vehicles are going to take away farmers' jobs. They're insane. I just haven't had a chance to get to them yet because I was getting ready for this tour, and then we're on tour, so it's always hard to do videos when I'm on tour. But when I get back, I absolutely will. Well, that, that was another uh, to tie that into something in the debate. That was like a, another Pete Buttigieg moment where I was like, oh, okay, because at first. He was like, we need to reevaluate how our military budget is going. And I was just like, really, Pete Buttigieg? Okay, I'm listening. And he's like, we need to make sure we have the best ships. They need to go, bam, pow, explode. It's like, okay, and we're back. You're a psycho. All yeah, right. Yeah, Thought for a second. No, no. Thought it would be war, war, war. RBA 3145, thank you. Warren supports Guaido and a coup in Bolivia. Yeah, not one not one word of Bolivia. Nothing about Venezuela. Just Iran's bad. Yeah, Trump's bad. Trump's. I think, Trump. I, think I heard that once yeah, or twice. Heard that Trump that was bad. Um, 
And uh, yeah, well, I think Cory Booker. Speaking of like Trump's bad, and that's all they have to say. Cory Booker was like, "Yeah, I haven't qualified for December yet because I'm not really in this thing." Uh, yeah. He had to like plug his website a punch. And I'm, I'm losing, so show some money if you want to see me come back here. Why does Bernie pull so many punches? I think Bernie needs to pull more punches. I don't know. What do you think? Um, well, thank you, Andrew Dwyer. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew Dwyer. Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. And I mean, I've said this before sometimes. I'd like to see Bernie come out swinging a little more. Um, but Bernie just seems to be very consistent on his message. He, he just, is. He just says, no, no, I, I think he did by far the best in that debate. And I think he's always done the best in those debates. But, I mean, he's got to I – mean, I mean, I wish he would just – he needs to differentiate himself from Warren at this point. Yeah. He yeah. really needs he really to do that. He really has to do that. Because they <laughs> Well, the media wants to tie them together. Exactly. So they're saying, hey, progressives, when we force Warren down the control, we will not feel that bad. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. That's yeah. what that is. And we all think, oh, you know, she's, she's pretty good. No, she's not. No, she's not. Yeah, he needs to start really differentiating. And, and he needs to kind of call out the establishment. He, he does that some. He certainly does. But but I, I think he needs to go a little bit harder because we live in an outsider time. And I get it, Bernie, Bernie's a nice guy. He's a diplomatic guy. He's not a mean or vicious guy. And that's fine, he doesn't have to be. But, you know, you kind of got to find a way to diplomatically explain how you're different yeah. and diplomatically explain how, and, and he's done it in the past. I mean, he said things like, dude, when a candidate like me gets this far, it's because the system made a mistake. He said stuff like yeah. that. That's a very, like, you know, upfront bold thing to say. He's got to do more of that, and you can do that and still be polite. Uh, Sandia Casino in Albuquerque. Okay. The what? The Sandia. Sandia Casino in Albuquerque. Okay, we'll look into it. Sandia Casino. We'll look into that. Uh, Tanaka, can you give me a good book recommendation? Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. Death of the Liberal Class by Chris Edges. Oh, that's a good. One. Yeah, there you go. Those are two. Start with those. Those are great. Yeah. Um, those are great books. Uh, Megan Morales. Hey, Megan. What's up? Shave your knuckles for justice. Went to official books and we're later disappointed. Hey, <laughs> sorry I had to. That sucks, Megan. Uh, that's that's pretty lame. Why were there uh, – if I, if I went to a Bernie event and there were a bunch of, like, Pete Buttigieg supporters there. I like when Pete Buttigieg was like, I'm inviting the progressives. And progressives were like, no thanks, buddy. Okay. And moderates. And they were like, we got your back, boo. Of course. Some of us are donors. <laughs> Don't worry, Pete. We got you. Progressives now. We'll, we'll pass. Yeah. That's, uh, that's who they are. Um, you guys rock. Thank you so much. Uh, Launch pit. i got to write down these venues. Uh, read social stratification and inequity. Bernie stays on message. Yes, he does. Launchpad and Albuquerque. Yeah, we'll look at that. Launchpad and what was it like? Stevia Casino? What Standia. Standia. Um, A B Q. Oh, that's for two two eight. Hashtag Ropes Pierre didn't guillotine himself. Yeah, buddy. I'm I'm gonna keep doing Ropes Pierre videos. That's gonna be my. Are we still in Australia? Yes, we are. That is why uh, that is why the stream is not of normal quality. Yep, and that's why we're not in a fancy studio. But uh, the next debate, December 19th, is in Los Angeles. First, we're going to try to go to the debate, I'm for sure. We're going to go live after the debate, no matter what. Um, so, yes, uh, Megan Morales. Thanks, Megan. I asked them about Pete. Can uh, federal oil money? Silence, of course. Nice. Yes, way to go. That's so great. Um, way to bring down the room, Megan. We have high hopes. We like Pete. He talks politely. Yeah, he's so nice. Um, Bernie depends on us to be his attack dog. Yeah, might be some truth to that. Um, all right, what else do we got? Balthazar, two, two, eight. What's up, dude? You know, it's a great venue. Streamlabs are an alternative <laughs> connected to Ron's channel. Streamlabs. Who books that room? I know. Uh, you hate Bill Clinton, the queen of the neoliberals? I think you meant to say Hillary? Why are you calling him a queen? Um, 
Uh, love and light, safe trip for you and Ron. Make sure you look into this Epstein Tony Rodham. I'm going out for a drink. I haven't had one in three months. All right, stay safe. Uh, Aussie fraud band, yeah. Um, Stevia Casino would be sweet. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, Thomas, both Klobuchar and Tulsi are paper ballots. They really f you up. You need a computer, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Klobuchar did. I will say that Klobuchar was when they were talking about election. She's like, there's only 11, you know, states that have paper ballot um, seats yeah. and stuff like that. It was, I mean, you know, yeah. that's, that's good stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah, there was all like, I think all of them maybe had like one good moment. We were like, <laughs> okay, we, yeah, all right, we right. both see eye on that one. Right, that's cool. Um, but you know. Kind of need a little bit more than that. Right. Um, how do you feel about Hillary saying, yeah, sure, I'll support the Dem candidate because I think uh, I know who they're going to, who it's going to be. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Her laugh is so creepy. <sighs> she's such a laugh. It is such a creepy laugh. So she's admitting that it's rigged again? Yeah, that's exactly what she's saying. I mean, she knows who the establishment favorite is. She knows it's this Liz Warren's to lose. And that's basically what she's hitting at. And and people laugh about it. It's it's funny. Like it's hilarious. Had Hillary won, either a Clinton or a Bush would have been either president or vice president for 32 out of the last 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony DeMeo, shave him. Bernie plays the best rally music. Yes, he does. We've been to a couple Bernie rallies. Yeah, he does play some good music. Um, we need socialist democracy. You got that right. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's anything else, Ron. Um, I think that's. Uh, I think we covered it. I mean, yeah. that's. Uh, some people are pointing out something that we pointed out earlier too. That that will repeat, but in just how lame. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's. I'm sorry, MSNBC handpicked that out. I mean, they they just they were applauding Warren left and right during the Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard exchange. I mean, Pete Buttigieg was just firing off MSNBC talking points. And people were applauding it. Yep. People were applauding for that. You know, like, and when she brought up why she was meeting with those people, they weren't, you yep. know, I mean, some people were. There were sure. some people, you know, there's probably some people that applauded for Bernie. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the audience was the situation failing to fully address the issues of our current situation, particularly the issue of Jubilee UDF. Uh, Hudson. No, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tulsi did vote for anti-BDS legislation, um, which was disappointing. Uh, and yeah, we've talked about UBI before. UBI on its own is not. It's it's not. And, and it's not. Andrew Yang's plan for UBI, I, I don't think is the way to go either. Um, and, you know, I think a jobs guarantee is the better way to go. But I also think that those two things don't need to be one or the other. Right. You know, and, and I don't understand why that's the way that they're going with it contemporarily. It tells me that does not support a jobs program, which I, I strongly disagree with her on that. Um, you know, we need a federal jobs guarantee. We can have it. We do have a need for it. And we can also look into different ways to implement a type of UBI that goes hand in hand uh, with strong protections like universal rent control. Because without strong protections, the UBI will be you know, worthless pretty quick. Yeah, I've talked about this a lot too, you know, and it's it's in, converse, in MMT conversations I've had with people like Jeff and Stephen Hale and Fidel Kaboob and, and um, is that uh, UBI integrated with a federal jobs guarantee underneath a massive comprehensive Green New Deal like the one Bernie drafted over the summer. Yeah. Which is where the jobs would be. Yeah. Like the jobs would be there. Yes, that's the federal. Why are they guarantee these jobs? By saving the planet from complete collapse. That requires a lot of us. That requires, a, I know that if you grew up on the same cartoons I did, you're like saving the planet, all it needs is a dude, is an aqua blue dude with a mullet and five young people that have magic rings. No, I, I don't think that was the cartoon so it's actually going to take all of us, like all of us working together. Well, think about it. So let's just look what just happened. So the Keystone Pipeline just leaked 380,000 uh, gallons of oil leaked, contaminated, um, or maybe it's 328,000. I forget. And the oil companies feel terrible. Oh, they're so bad. they up all don't, of it. Don't worry. They're fully taking the plane. Mm, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers to them. Um, so like, let's look at that. Dismantling that oil infrastructure, that's going to take some labor. Yeah. Uh, putting solar panels on everything, putting um, uh, mass scale. So that's going to be need to made on a mass scale, 
right? What if we have high speed rail coast to coast? Yes. What about all these things we're going to need? Reinvest in our infrastructure. Yes. We're going to need to plant more trees. We're going to need to put more um, gardens out to attract more bees. 90% of bees have been killed. All of these things are going to take jobs, people that are currently working in these fields, gardeners, botanists. I mean, everything. They're going to have to train more people. Engineers, they're, they're going to have to train people. Right. Well, she. What if we had free college where there would be more programs oh. dedicated to this type of thing? It's weird how it's all connected, but yet we're told we can't have these things by people like Joe Biden. And they're told that they're these separate issues. Yeah. The answer within the answer to climate collapse. Yeah. Is an answer to all of these things. How are we going to have a racial divide? Is getting everybody good jobs going to end racism? Of course not. But it will damn well help. Yeah, because no, it's when we stop bombing everybody, we won't have refugees. When we're not spending all this money on military, we'll have more money for other things we want to talk about doing. So we won't need to build a wall, and we won't have an immigration crisis because we'll be sharing our technology and our research. Every country will need to be sharing everything it's doing on how it's fixing the planet, and every country will be able to put its own citizens to work. MMT just isn't an American thing. I was talking to Stephen Hale. We were talking to Stephen. We had lunch with him. Any country that is a monetary sovereign like the United States, China, Australia, the UK, I believe, who creates their own currency can use MMT to fund all this stuff. Right. Yeah, and it's just, that's when, whenever people are like, well, the Green New Deal, what, why does it talk about jobs? Because it's all connected. Yes. This is all connected. We need jobs to do this, and we need jobs in our society. And this is how, you know, we, we just kind of stay on this planet a while longer. <laughs> Which is a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, How do we get billboards for ranked choice voting? Oh, I guess the quickest thing would be to buy them. Yeah, raise but, money, buy. Um, and that, and that's another thing uh, that uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. Anymore, we we do not they did not bring up any alternative voting talk in any of the debates. Plenty of plenty of impeachment. Plenty of leading questions on war. Plenty of. Uh, you know, just distraction questions on whatever else. Plenty of dumb personal stories that no one gives a shit about, but they did not bring up ranked choice voting. They right. did not bring up ranked choice voting. Yeah. How are we going to pay for it? Yeah. It's funny, like, and even Bernie's starting to do, he's putting it on Twitter, how are we going to pay for this massive war budget? We're just going to keep that. Every time they want to spend money on the awful things, we have to ask how we can pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of us. So we got to get so loud on that. Just never stop with that. Any post anywhere you see about war, or some bullshit, or a tax break. How are we going to pay for a one point five trillion dollar tax break that Trump already gave? How are we going to pay for that? How are we going to pay for that? I want to know. How are we going to pay for that tax break? How are we going to pay for that? Because that's what a tax. You're taking less tax money, so there's less revenue coming in. How are we going to pay for it? Which, by the way, ta Trump's tax break would have paid for free college for everyone. One point five trillion dollars. Student debt for the tax break he gave to billionaires. Could have taken care of it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, no corporate driven UBI. Um, it's uh, it's great doing the show. Um, the Fed is monetizing debt directly. We're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, guys, for tuning into this uh, post debate uh, special bonus live stream. I will be going. It feels off. weird because it's like the afternoon where we're at. Yeah. It's like early in the day. Uh -huh. Like we woke up into this like this was our morning activity it's like in the evening uh yeah um, uh by the way i just got pushed till next city council meeting when i was booked to bring up municipal broadband ah oh, that sucks amars but yeah just keep showing up just yeah. i know it's not because they they dick me around too and i showed up with a group of people yeah. when i brought municipal broadband i showed up with like a group so they they couldn't ignore us and that's kind of what you have to do every time and uh in my community because we kept showing up they move the city council meeting to 5 p.m. on Mondays. Not an easy time for the general people to make. So that's wow. what they did. But anyway. Yes, Democrats have dug their grave with the impeachment idiocy, and it's uncovered the arrogance of these State Department goofballs. Yeah, it's another big, it's another big distraction. It's like Russia Gate for three years. There's yeah. a great another great it's distraction. Their, yeah. It's the ruling class distraction of the day. Uh, RBU 83145, top of the elite in the U.S., and the world will be free. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's our show, everybody. This was so fun. I will be going live this Sunday, three uh, and then I'll be dropping videos normal style all next week. 
Uh, and we will probably find uh, some studio time. Ron, I'll be back more live streaming in the studio. I want to do that once a week um, where um, so Ron can join me to do that. So every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific. Um, and of course, December 19th, we'll go live immediately following the debate and go to uh, ronclacone.com or grandmella.com for all of our two dates. Thank you so much. This was so cool. Hopefully to see you at the show in Perth. And thank you to everyone that came out to all the shows in Australia. Uh, thanks, Ron Placone. Absolutely. Follow us on social media. Yeah, at Ron, Ron Placone, youtube.com slash Ron Placone. Follow our stuff. And we'll yes. see you in Perth tomorrow night. See you in Perth tomorrow night at Graham Elwood. Uh, Twitter is where I talk all my politics and I post about going live. When I do this kind of last minute midweek live streams, that's where you'll find that out. Like, subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Don't click skip ad when you watch the videos. Hit the bell notification button. They still might not notify you, but uh, we really appreciate you guys doing this. This has been an awesome tour and we'll see you back. Uh, we'll see you in Perth tomorrow night. We'll see you back in the States next week. Later, change your knuckles for justice.